Dua per tiga jumlah seluruh orang Kristen di dunia itu tinggal di Eropa seabad yang lalu. Hari ini tinggal seperempat. 25 persen. Setengah lebih mengurang. Kalau saudara bisnismen, sel saudara kurang setengah lebih, 50 persen. Saudara pasti sudah stres. Nggak ingat Tuhan Yesus lagi. Kalian sudah mendengar sendiri bukan bagaimana curhatan memilukan dari sang pendeta tentang negara mayoritas Kristen yang sekarang justru Kristennya semakin punah. Dan dia ingin mencari tahu apa sebenarnya yang menjadi penyebabnya. Biar kami tunjukkan tiga dari jutaan penyebabnya ya. Bagi kalian umat Kristen, kalian wajib untuk menontonnya ya. Agar kalian tahu apa sebenarnya yang terjadi dalam agama kalian. Dan bagi sahabat muslim, mari kita saksikan bersama-sama ya. Wabarakatuh, sahabat ofisial di Marbun berada, khususnya umat Islam. Semoga kalian selalu sehat ya. Dan tanpa berlama-lama, mari kita simak apa sebenarnya yang menjadi alasan kenapa agama Kristen di negara mayoritas Kristen itu sendiri justru semakin menurun dan semakin kehilangan jemaat gerejanya. The fact that you went in from Christianity and transitioned into Islam, what were the things that you perhaps didn't align yourself completely with Christianity that helped navigate your journey to towards Islam? Actually, as a Christian, the deeper I got into my faith, the more questions I had. And, and I started to be a bit more confused as I was going along. I was going to Bible studies and going to church every Sunday. And I'm not saying that's what makes you religious. But as I went along, I started to have a lot of questions that were unanswered. Actually, the Quran started answering those questions for me, like questions about who is Jesus and is Jesus really God and these kind of questions I always had them on my mind and also another question I had was um, are Christians the only people that will get into heaven and the Quran started answering those questions for me and one thing that always confused me as a Christian was like how how can Jesus peace be upon him be God if he doesn't know what's going to happen to him on the crucifixion day. I was reading the Bible and it said that he was sweating blood because he was so nervous about what's going to happen. So I'm thinking to myself, if Jesus was God, then how is he nervous about what's going to happen? And from the other side, how can God die? And from the other side, I'm thinking like, if we put God into a human time frame, which has a beginning and an end, then God would have a beginning and an end. But God is infinite, so to me, it feels that we're somehow limiting God. Benar sekali, pastinya jemaat Kristen akan bertanya tentang tiga hal di dalam diri mereka sebagaimana yang sudah disebutkan di dalam video ini ya. Namun kami akan pertegas lagi ketiga hal tersebut. Yang pertama, bagaimana bisa Yesus menjadi Tuhan? Dan yang kedua, apakah Kristen akan masuk surga? Dan kemudian yang ketiga, bagaimana mungkin Tuhan bisa mati? Ketiga pertanyaan ini pastinya menghantui hati sanubari umat Kristen yang waras. Nah, ketiga pertanyaan ini akhirnya membuat umat Kristen baik di dalam negeri maupun di luar negeri. Contohnya seperti nenek ini yang diajak oleh pendetanya untuk kembali masuk Kristen. The God of the universe wants to offer salvation to everyone who trusts in Jesus Christ and their sins could be forgiven. I don't believe that. We search for the Lord Jesus. He is the Son of God and He is the Holy Spirit. Oh, no. oh this grace, Christian. Oh, it's sad that you departed from the church. Oh, no. Well, come to me, love, Rabbi Lala. Me, Allah, watch for it. Watch for I know I can't believe that. I promise you that He is the Son of God and He is the Holy Spirit. No, you just come on to me. Yeah. I don't know if I will get to heaven. I know that I will only get to heaven. 
if I make no association with my three years Absolutely not. No one can be searching. I think Christians can be searching because I have a Savior who died for me, rose for that, and he paid took away my sin, he paid the price for me, and I'm going to be with the Lord Jesus in eternal life because of what he did and uh, not what I did. That's the hope of the gospel. How is your sin and guilt? My sin and my guilt can be taken away with my repentance. My sin and my guilt can be taken away with my repentance. And the only sin that Allah will not forgive is Benar sekali apa yang dikatakan oleh nenek ini bahwa dosa yang tidak bisa diampuni adalah dosa menyekutukan Allah. Kenapa bisa demikian? Benar sekali apa yang dikatakan oleh nenek ini bahwa dosa yang tidak bisa diampuni adalah dosa menyekutukan Allah. Kenapa bisa demikian? Tentunya karena sudah jelas bahwasanya Allah adalah Tuhan dan dialah yang menciptakan Yesus menjadi hamba. Lalu kenapa Yesus yang disebut Tuhan oleh umat Kristen? Artinya Kristen sudah melakukan penyelewengan hak di sini. Sementara dunia Kristen meninggikan hak azazi manusia, tetapi anehnya hak Tuhan malah mereka nistakan atau mereka rendahkan. Kami bukan menggurui agama kalian ya sahabat ofisial atau sahabat-sahabat Kristen pada khususnya, tetapi faktanya memang demikian adanya. Bahkan seorang anak kecil saja di Eropa sana sudah mulai enggan terhadap agama Kristen. Mari kita simak bagaimana dialognya berikut ini. How do you want to be a Muslim? Because how they're covered up, it's like just so beautiful. I want to be one of those. So when you went to a church and when you went to the mosque, did you notice the difference? So which one did you like more? You like the mosque more? Why? Because they were like praying to God. We were all getting together in one big group praying to Allah. Yeah? yeah. At, at church, how was church like? What did you think about going to a church? Well, we were just sitting down listening to people talking and so. And you didn't like that? Yeah. Jika anak kecil saja sudah mulai enggan dan sudah tidak mau lagi datang ke gereja, maka bersiap-siaplah jika agama Kristen akan punah dengan sendirinya di Eropa sana, bahkan di Amerika, beserta negara-negara yang lainnya akan dipenuhi oleh umat Islam. Allah is promising them paradise because they were the first to turn to Islam. They were the ones who came in right at the beginning. Allah is telling them, you know what? They are the close ones. For them, they will be paradise. They will receive and achieve more than they would ever have imagined. Dan sekarang mari kita dengarkan bagaimana seorang imam besar ya, ni Fatman Faruk yang juga seorang apologet muslim bertanya kepada robot AI tentang kebenaran Islam. Mari kita simak. ChatGPT without any bias, without any religious dogma, I want to know what is the best preserved word of God between the Old Testament, the New Testament and the Quran looking only at manuscripts and oral memorization. In one paragraph, let me know which one of those three is best preserved. Strictly based on the criteria of manuscript consistency and oral memorization, the Quran is the best preserved among the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Quran. Early Quranic manuscripts, such as the Uthmanic Codex, show remarkable consistency with modern versions, and the tradition of oral memorization hips has ensured that the text has been preserved with minimal variation. While the Old and New Testaments have rich manuscript histories, they contain significant textual variations, and oral memorization does not play as central a role in their preservation. Thus, the Quran is considered the best preserved in terms of both manuscript integrity and oral transmission. All you Christian apologists, go argue with ChatGBT. Allahumma inni as'aluka bi'anni ashadu annaka anta Allah La ilaha illa anta anta al-ahadu samad Lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakullahu kufuan ahad